we'll go to Coach Arnett. Well, great. Uh, very excited to be here. Just came from the practice field. We um, uh, really enjoyed our time here. Came down on the 26th and um, uh, had some, some great interaction. Uh, I think uh, today they're uh, getting a good chance to go to Bush Gardens, so they're excited about that. Kind of let them run for the first couple of days. And uh, this for us is Tuesday of game week, so we kind of locked into our preparation phase now, still letting them balance a little bit of fun during the day and uh, uh, partaking in some of the things that uh, uh, the bowl game has set up for us. So excited about that, uh, obviously. I uh, had a chance to visit with Zach at the press conference um, uh, from our fan base and from our university. Obviously, condolences for Mike, um, uh, a very special uh, coach. And, and I know someone that's on the hearts and minds uh, from him and his family and also uh, to Mississippi State. But I think this game is about uh, the, the reward for our guys. Um, uh, that went through a really uh, kind of a tale of two different seasons. Uh, started off a little disappointment with a Big Ten loss at Indiana and then to go on a six game win streak and then have three tough losses in a row and to cap it off with a, a rivalry win against Northwestern. I thought to get the bid to come here to Tampa and uh, a bowl experience I've had with, with Jim and, and uh, his organization on several different occasions as a coordinator, as a head coach also. So uh, I'm very excited to be here and looking forward to the opportunity to play on the second. So thank you. Coach. Yeah, uh, I'll, first and foremost, we would like to uh, thank the Rely Quest Bowl. This has been an absolute first class experience. Our players are having a, a, a tremendous time down here in Tampa. We got to get out of some colder than usual weather up there in Mississippi. And so it's uh, been very enjoyable for us. We're headed to the practice field next. But uh, for, yeah, first and foremost, it's, it's been a, an amazing experience up to this point. Uh, and we can't thank the bowl committee enough. Obviously, uh, we are extremely excited to to represent the Southeastern Conference. We're playing a, a phenomenal opponent who, when you turn on the film, plays the game the way it's supposed to be played. Uh, I know our guys have a deep respect and admiration for how they play the game. I mean, uh, ultimately, you know, we're going to have a good time here, but there's, there's two hard-nosed football teams going to line up and, and uh, hopefully put on a good, good show for all the, the fans in attendance. Um, obviously, we are very appreciative of all the different um, signs of support for uh, Coach Leach and his influence on the game. Uh, the thing we've talked about and Coach Leach's family has expressed to us, obviously it, it, we don't want to get lost in this, is, uh, this is ultimately a reward for our players for the, the job they've done this year and the success that they've had. Uh, eight and four fo football team, uh, They've done a tremendous job this year, and uh, this is a reward for their efforts because we would not be here if it was not for the work and success that they, they put in all year round. And so we're excited for one more opportunity. Obviously, the best way we can honor Coach Leach is to go out there and, and play the way he expects us to play, uh, and that's with tremendous effort and toughness. And we know that Illinois is going to show up and do just that, and so we're excited to share the field with them. Great. Questions? Leo? For both coaches and Coach Bill, may you first because you've had the most experience with this. You've both talked about the rewards of coming to a bowl game. How do you balance the reward with staying focused on the matter at hand? Yeah, it's kind of been a unique experience for me this year. I'd never, um, all the bowl games, uh, uh, seven straight at Wisconsin and three out of the five years at, at Arkansas, I'd never had a player opt out of a game, right? So that was the first uh, challenge. We had three guys pop out, obviously, um, uh, three good players. Um, so. Uh, that's the first unique challenge, but we actually had four practices in before we even knew our opponent. Um, as soon as you became bowl eligible, I, I, I started a in-season eight-week program that allowed our developmental crew to go on an eight-week window of strength, strength and conditioning and training, a little bit extra. And then we had five practices for them that were devoted only to our Devo players. So we practiced about 40 to 50 guys. Um, so that was the biggest reward, right? It's just a, it's really kind of almost like a mini spring um, uh, conditioning for our younger players. And then uh, even after we became aware, obviously, we're playing Mississippi State in a, a very good football team. We, we really didn't transition to Mississippi State preparation until uh, after a two, three more practices where it was just good on good. We just uh, got good at football again, and then the last ten practices are all devoted to Mississippi State. So, um, And then the, re the reward is uh, I, I just scheduled everything on the front end here, let them uh, have an aquarium day. Our guys hopped on a boat and drove around the bay and saw dolphins. Like, you know, I, I didn't really join them, but they, they seemed to get excited about it. So um, <laughs> not a lot of dolphins in Illinois. Uh, so 
uh, just fun stuff like that and reward. And today we had a little, uh, I could tell by the attitude walking in the door, to, I have a team meeting every day. I kind of start the day off with the schedule that uh, what's going to go on and had a lot of, uh, it was the earliest morning we gotten these guys up because at the 11 o'clock game, I kind of want to transition them into that and, and uh, the mood wasn't there. So I, I have a freshman talent show pool that any freshman that we're not hazing them, right? They're showing their talents. Um, <laughs> they get a chance to uh, come up and uh, Joey Okla did a Connor uh, uh, McGregor impersonation that was to die for the other day. And then uh, today, Elijah McCantos and uh, Gabe Ackes uh, had a dance off that was pretty entertaining. So we kind of sprinkled that in. Yeah, uh, definitely not difficult to uh, reward the players. I mean, obviously, the, all the different bowl events uh, that are put on, uh, it's easy for them. The harder part is probably making sure they know they're getting ready to play a football game, too. Now, it's uh, really convenient for us. You turn on the you turn on the film of your opponent and, uh, you know, your players realize pretty quick that we, we got a heck of a football game coming up January 2nd. So uh, that's made it easier to balance it out. But echoing what Coach said, obviously your, your early practices are, are more like an early spring. You're working the developmental guys who, who need extra work. The guys who played all year, they're coming off a long season. So you're getting them back to 100% healthy. And then obviously as you get closer to the game, you, you ramp it up and get into more of your normal routine. We're headed out for our practice this afternoon. It's a Tuesday game week for us, and so we'll see if we uh, didn't enjoy ourselves too much last night. Okay, right here. Brett, you talked about how this could be a springboard to next year, specifically at running back and in DB with the guys opting out. What do you expect to see? Who do you expect to make an impact? At yeah, this you know, um, as you guys know, uh, we really got banged up in the secondary at the end of the year last year of this season. So. Uh, you know, obviously Spoon and, and Sid were huge parts of our back end, uh, our, our uh, success. But uh, we have been able the last two or three games to get, you know, um, uh, Xavier was uh, Scott, you know, had a, a tremendous role really from the Michigan game on and played a lot of football for us. Uh, Josh McCray on the opposite side of the ball, obviously with, with Chase hopping out. Josh has been 100 percent involved in bowl practices. He actually did the Devo practices, too, because he was he was clear to play at that point. So. You know, he's uh, basically a guy that we were counting on big things before the years ever started, and he's never been full strength since Indiana. So uh, he ran right, right, almost ran over me today. He looks pretty good. Um, so that, and then a, a, a guy that uh, Tyler Strain, you know, really had a nice, you know, couple games there at the end. Um, he got knocked out of the uh, Purdue game with a concussion, but uh, has really come in and done a nice job. So I, I think, obviously, the way these guys play offense, right, we're, our, our secondary is going to have to be. Uh, at its best, and, and uh, Coach Henry, new play caller, right? But he literally called plays all year uh, during practices, during scrimmages. So uh, this was something that, you know, it, it's new because it's new, uh, but it's not really new to our guys. I really haven't seen any hiccup in what they've done. Okay, right over here in the front. Zach, for you guys, you know, I know it was just announced that Emmanuel Forbes will be playing, Cam Young, Luke Winston Sharp, a bunch of guys that, you know, are headed to the NFL that decided to play in this game, I guess. How, how important is it? You know, for this team to, like you said, honor Mike Leach and also, you know, how much of a motivating factor has that been for some of these guys to, to come back and, and play this game? Oh, I think you probably have to ask them individually. I know uh, I know most of them had, had expressed that they were playing uh, prior to Coach Leach's obviously unfortunate uh, incident. And so uh, I just think it speaks to the guys we got in our program, you know, guys who like playing football, guys who want to play for each other, the other guys in the locker room. Uh, I think it says a lot about those guys individually. You know, they're football guys. They're Mississippi State guys. And uh, if we're going to line the ball up, roll the ball out there and line up and play, they want to be with their teammates and, and finish the season off with them. And you know, those are obviously guys you you love having in your locker room and you, you appreciate all that they've done for your program. Just to follow up on that real quick, you know, you guys were dealing with a lot uh, after Coach Leach's death, I guess. How, how has the team kind of responded? Well, what's practice kind of been like, you know, since then as you kind of moved back into to game form? Yeah, practice has been good. I think our guys like getting back into a, a, a sense of normalcy and routine. Uh, obviously, anytime you go through a loss like that, uh, that's what family's for, and that's what a football team is. And so uh, it's been really good for us to all get back together, spend a whole lot of time together, uh, and go to work. And so, yeah. Right down here. Uh, coach, you've had coaching departures as well. Um, you have, I guess, 10 assistant slots to fill. How, what's your plan to do that for yeah. the bowl game? Yeah, I, I, I'll actually name a, a DB coach here within the next uh, day. Um, I've, I've had that literally the, the day I made the transition. I knew who I was going to hire. Um, it's actually somebody I actually interviewed before in the original process that I didn't get to. So that one's kind of been sitting on ready. But 
uh, when he joins us, he'll be kind of more of an analyst eyes in the sky uh, on game day. But uh, the on the field positions have been really uh, filled for the bowl game within our staff with quality control assistants um, uh, uh, on defense, Ryan Simerson and Alex Panos, who had been student assistants for us. I've let them step into the role kind of as GAs that are, are helping, obviously, offensively or defensively. The way we kind of laid it out, Aaron Henry has taken the back end overall with some, some help. Uh, Coach Boo's taking the linebackers inside and outside with, with Preston. Uh, 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 helping him, and then Jamal's taking the defensive line. So that's that. And then uh, um, uh, 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 Danny Cameron, um, who had been with us all year as an offensive analyst, he had worked in the running back room with CP. He had done all of <laughs> all of CP's videos, tips, grinders, all that stuff. He'd been doing it all year, so he's easy transition to put him into the running back room. And then, uh, like I said, I'll fill the defensive back position uh, very quickly, but I'm going to wait. Uh, to hire my running back and my outside linebacker job until after uh, the bowl game. And there's some NFL people involved as well, so I may wait actually till later January until the NFL season's done. Back there. Coach Arnett, Will, Will Rogers, he's put up some pretty good numbers this year uh, in the air raid system. Is he unfairly labeled a system quarterback? Yeah, I think he probably is. I mean, obviously you, you judge a quarterback by uh, how they perform and, and typically the record of your team. And so, uh, since he's been the starter, we won a lot of games, and, and he's played really, really well when he gets us into the right plays. Uh, you know, I, I think I can't speak to every offensive system, but I know in the last three years learning under Coach Leach, he gives a quarterback a tremendous amount of, of freedom at the line of scrimmage to, to really check into whatever he wants. And uh, Will's, Will's got to be up there. He's one of the best to ever do it in, in, his, in his system. So, uh, yeah, I think it'd probably be an unfair label. For both coaches, again, Coach Zach, we'll start with you. The portal, great coming in. Now you got to worry about going out. How much of a double-edged sword has that become? Yeah, it's the same for everyone, right? Obviously, uh, you know, it's a it's a new day and age of college football. Players have opportunities. If if uh, you know there's a better fit for them and a better opportunity for them, then they certainly have the the right to go and do that. And obviously, you have the right to to recruit and try to improve your team. And so, uh, yeah, it's a reality we're all dealing with. Yeah, um, you know, I, I, when I took the job uh, two years ago, I told Josh that it was coming out of COVID and it was entering the portal world, right? And, and it's really allowed you to, uh, for a coach taking over a program, right? It allows you to flip your roster pretty quickly um, into your skill sets, right? Like not, not good, bad, or indifferent. We were, we were gonna definitely do things differently offensively and defensively than they had prior recruited. So we kind of adjusted the staff and the roster uh, as it goes forward. I didn't even realize I had a personnel meeting yesterday, and, and uh, um, uh, it was brought to my attention, I guess, we're one of the uh, top five or, or tied for second or whatever it was in fewest guys in the portal. Um, and, and I didn't really know that. I don't really count it. I didn't track it, although I've been listening to some of these bowl games, and I heard as high as many as 20 players in the portal. Like, I mean, to me, that's like crazy. Um, but. Everybody runs their program a little bit different. Like we, 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 we're a development type program, but there's been guys that have come in and helped. Obviously, Tommy DeVito, we're a different football team because of the quarterback, right? Like um, that was an immediate one. Uh, right now, we have some portal guys that we haven't been able to talk about yet because it's, and I'm sure Zach is, you know, it's the portal thing is very frustrating because you can't sign them to anything. I mean, you can sign them to an NIL if you want to burn it. Um, uh, an, an LI, right? Not an NIL. Yeah. Uh, uh, an NLI. That's a letter of intent, but it's non binding. So, like, they can literally take a scholarship and then go, and it does, there's no repercussions on them. It's just on the school. So, we don't sign our guys. Um, so, they're not literally going to be committed 100% to our program until the first day of class. Uh, for us, is you know, the second uh, uh, January, whatever it is, the 17th after Martin Luther King Day. So, it's a really – the NCAA is trying to catch up to it. The 85 rule scholarship really has helped. But um, I think it's a necessary evil just in the world that we're in right now. Yeah. Uh, Brett, where are you guys at health-wise? Is there anyone you don't think you'll have available on Monday? Yeah. I, um, I'm not pulling one on, on Zach here. We, we're actually 100%. Um, the only guy, uh, 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 Josh Geske, who's a, a backup lineman, um, he got injured in uh, – um, Bull practice before we left, and he 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 went through Indy today. I, I don't know if he'll play, but he's uh, a backup lineman and in, in, in on field goal. But other, otherwise, everybody, other than the guys you know about, right, the guys that have missed season all all year, everybody should be good to go. For Coach Arnett, 
Paul, we've got the same question to him. You know, there are players' availability for this game as well as health. And on top of that, how have you yourself handled the transition to head coach and still being defensive coordinator and getting ready for this game and being involved in the offense? Yeah, well, obviously, we expect everyone who's on the trip to be available to play. And so we're, we're, we're at full strength as well. And obviously, it's, a, it's been a learning experience, to say the least. Um, right? Obviously, got a lot trying to, trying to prepare for a great offense. Uh, still, you know, still being the defensive coordinator, call the defense, but then obviously also responsible for seeing the whole program. Uh, fortunately for myself, uh, got to learn under obviously one of the best to ever doing under Coach Leach, and just doing my best to try to replicate what he would do. Okay, down here in front for Brett. You yep. mentioned it before, but with Aaron Henry, it's not a new responsibility, but maybe a new title. We talked to guys like Johnny Newton and Tyreek Barnes who weren't in his position group, so we know what Aaron's about. So when you were able to make that announcement. What, how did you feel the team reacted to kind of knowing what Aaron's about and what they're going to get? Yeah. Um, unfortunately, because of the timing of the whole thing, you know, um, I, I believe Tuesday morning I knew that Ryan was going to get the job. I was with Aaron. That's when I told him. And then we were in homes that week. And, of course, that was the last week of live recruiting. So I was telling people in the homes, like, hey, this is – everybody want to know who's going to be the D coordinator. I'm like, well, you're sitting right next to him. And they thought I was talking about me. I'm like, no, the other side, right? And, <laughs> and uh, I, I really wanted to keep it – under wraps just for one reason. I, I think there's a great power in telling your players first, right? But it was just kind of the way that it played out. I, I, I knew that wasn't going to be possible. And then literally Taz um, literally called Aaron and I were in the car. I, I just told Aaron that I was going to name coordinator about uh, an hour earlier. We were driving to a, a recruit's home and Taz called and he thought he would, he was worried he was going to be leaving, right? So uh, Aaron had begun to tell a few guys that what was happening as well. So, uh, but the reaction has been awesome. And just at practice, like, you know, obviously there's a game plan involved with Mississippi State. So we'll, we'll do a lot of things that we've done, but we'll also change up some things. And I'm excited for the offseason. I'll, I'll, uh, uh, whoever I bring in there in the outside linebacker room, I know exactly what I'm looking for there. I got a pool of about five, six guys, and um, I'll, I'll kind of sort through that with Aaron and the rest of the staff. Um, I'm, I'm kind of elevating J-Mo as well uh, to some uh, a title that, that I think those two guys you – can, you can do that when you have guys that know each other. Heck, those guys play together, right? Um, so – I think it's exciting about what our defense has been and maybe possibly where it can go. Back down here in front. Zach, with this game, you guys are looking to, you know, win nine games in a season, first time since 2017, I guess. How important is that in terms of carrying, you know, the momentum from signing day uh, with a win here into the off season? Yeah, it's always, go, always better to go in an off season with a win than a loss, right? Uh, kind of as much fun as you have on these bowl trips, you always, you always remember how it ends, right? Um, so yeah, that, I mean that's important. Obviously, uh, we did a really nice job. Our assistant coaches—I've I've failed to mention them up to this point so far—but they've probably been the biggest benefit to me throughout this whole process. Is uh, how good those guys have have done, and they did a heck of a job. We held our signing class together. Uh, pretty much everyone was committed, signed with us, and uh, it would be a, a gigantic springboard into the off season to to leave with a win. But we know it's going to be a heck of a challenge because uh, over the opponent we got to face. Middle. Brett, I'm sure whenever you have coaching change, your players have questions. What, what do you tell them about, you know, moving forward about, you know, if they have questions about what's yeah. happened? Yeah, you know, what's kind of been new to these guys, I think, is um, they had been around a staff that they loved, right? Um, you know, shoot, I cried when, when Ryan called, right? Like, he and I got emotional and, uh, you know, when CP and I had conversations, like, but it's kind of cool to see that, right? Like, you got to teach your kids how to how to build relationships and how to how to feel bad when someone leaves because they've impacted your life you know i i, uh, I remember when i was a, a young player and uh, my outside linebacker coach uh, left to take a job at wisconsin right when i was at iowa and i remember going through a lot of emotions back then so i think it's been awesome um uh, i think we have i did kind of in my own way tell those guys listen the guy that hired those other guys is still here right so i'm going to probably do it again I, I think anytime i replace an assistant i try to build on what we've already done, but I like to bring in a different kind of not an opposite, but a different uh, a different way of doing things. I think in the outside linebacker room, I'd really like to bring something that brings a lot of pass rush value. Um, uh, I really think we got to, we have an outside. Kevin had done a great job of building that room. Um, that outside linebacker group might be one of the most talented groups I've ever been around, uh, just in the pure numbers and and quality of players. Um, and then obviously running back, you know, uh, with Chase leaving one of the best in the country, but uh, you know, I feel pretty good about some of these other guys we've recruited. So I think it's a, 
it's been overwhelmingly uh, amazing to me how many people have reached out to me about these two jobs. Um, the DB job, I think, got out there pretty quick in the community what I was going to do, so that hasn't been a big one. But outside backer and running back, it's, it's, it's going to be fun to see who I want to go with. There we go, right down here. For both coaches again, and Coach Brett, we'll start with you. Was there a play or a call during a game this year that you just had to laugh at, or, and I know this is a bad analogy, or you've been pulling your hair out? <laughs> yeah, I, I had pretty lucky. Obviously, uh, Coach Leach gave me complete freedom to call whatever I want, whenever I want, and so there's there's probably been a few too many zero pressures and some really bad times, and it's uh, it's gone the wrong way. But yeah, so whatever hair I have, yeah, I definitely pulled it out there. Yeah, and I just got to say, I, I if these guys can build upon and improve upon it. That defense, I feel bad for the rest of the Big Ten because that is that's been some of the best defense I, as a as a fan of just defense and aggressive defense the way it's supposed to be played. The job the job that they did this year, I mean, it's it's fun to watch. I know our guys have enjoyed watching it just on film because that's how defense is supposed to be played. They've done a, a phenomenal job. Thanks, Coach Andy. You as well. Um, <laughs> Uh, I don't know how many people know the storyline. Uh, Coach uh, Miller, my Bart Miller, and Coach played it together uh, uh, back in the day. So I've been trying to get Coach Miller to share some stories yeah. from back in the day. I was on the losing end of that one most <laughs> times. Don't worry. You t but uh, um, uh, what the question is whether there's a. Was it a play or a, or a call during a game that if you didn't laugh at it, you would pull your hair out? I shouldn't comment on that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> might get fined. Um, I, mean, I, can, I can comment on that you one, actually. I don't yeah. think, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, I get a couple other choices as well. Um, <laughs> no, I, I think the one thing that's really fun, um, you know, is just being in year two, um, and Coach will get to know this now, when you take over a room, right, when you, as a head coach, one of the most rewarding things you can have is player success, right? Like, wins are great. Um, I got notified yesterday that four of our guys are invited to the combine, right? So I called all those guys last night, and and just to hear that voice, like that, to hear their reaction. Um, so, you know, we had 19 guys get academic or get uh, all conference. We have 10 guys coming back that were all conference players. I think my first year we had three or four players, all total, right? And now we have 10 returning. It's just, it's fun to see these guys build. Um, the tremendous challenge to, I. I, I you know, at, at first we'd heard a couple different SEC teams, and then when I heard uh, Mississippi State, I think I got intrigued with. I knew our guys would really enjoy the challenge of this game, right? Like they, they, they love playing football, and they're very unique to anything we see in the Big Ten. You know, so it's really been easy to lock these guys in. I don't know what kind of success we're going to have, but you turn on Mississippi State's film uh, defensively, the things that they create, the movements, uh, and the pressures, and in, in the in the in the design and the return, and it it's all makes sense, but they, they got to sort through it. And offensively, uh, for what they do, um, uh, defensively, it's a hard task for us to, to see what they're doing or get a gauge on what they're doing before the snap. And it, it's just a really cool preparation. I think our kids really have enjoyed the process of preparing for an opponent. That's what we've been, because there's no rules now, right? In, in, in bull prep, it's unlimited. You don't have to worry about 20 hours, right? Like. Uh, and for coaches and for players that love the game of football, uh, the more you can teach and coach and, and, and slow the game down, the better they'll play. And that's what's fun about the bowl game. Okay, right down in front. Brent, I'm curious if I should have done Emmanuel Forbes, not only for the way he can get interceptions, but also bring back some touchdowns as well. <laughs> I hope he doesn't get any of those reps. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, very opportunistic. Uh, you know, we have a phrase uh, in our program, uh, CTOTTY, I catch the ones they throw you. In, in, he, he is very opportunistic. Um, a lot of that, you know, the, the quarterbacks are, are facing a great deal of pressure, right? And it's not necessarily physical pressure, it's mental pressure. What Coach does schematically is a very tough challenge to know anything that's happening before the snap. So I think a lot of times the quarterbacks are thrown into what they think they are going to see, and the answer ends up changing in the middle of the play. And uh, that's a very hard thing um, to simulate game speed wise for our quarterbacks uh, in this preparation. We have two, uh, two more questions here. There's one here and then and Leo. Uh, Brett, as you work on filling out this coaching staff, how, if at all, has the pitch changed just given what you guys have done in your first two years at Illinois? Or the interest, I guess, in, in oh, being part of it. Oh, for being on our staff? Yeah. Um, I, I think, you know, what's, what's amazing to me, um, 
I can't imagine what Zach's going through. Like, so when I had to make my first staff, right, I remember um, I kept two guys from Coach Alvarez's staff. We played our last game here in the Outback Bowl um, back then. Uh, and then I basically let nine coaches go, right, uh, off a team that went to a bowl game. And, and uh, I was very emotional um, about it. And, and ironically, as the world plays out now, um, uh, the person that helped me get through that was my mom, right? She knew I was very distraught, and, and she said to me, we actually played a home game against Michigan and won that game, and I was just kind of sitting over in the corner. I knew that the next game was going to be a bowl game, right? And, and um, she said to me, she said, I know you're upset about what you're going to do with this staff. And I said, uh, I am. And she goes, well, keep in mind, this staff was Coach Alvarez's staff. you got to make your staff, right? And And – that was a huge turning point for me because that's the way I kind of began to view it, right? And that's when I made some transition. The next year we won 12 ball games, right? And, and uh, I didn't know coaches at all at that point, right? Now I'm 50, 52, getting ready to turn 53 here in, a, in about 15 days. And, and um, I just know so many more people, right? And I've never hired a friend, right? I, now I've hired former players. And, and actually, when I gave Aaron a job, he said, I didn't think you'd name me because you always say you don't want to hire a friend. And I, I said, you're not a friend. And, and I kind of <laughs> said it like that, and I didn't mean it like that. You're a former player, right? Um, but he has become a friend, right? But I, I just don't ever believe you can – you don't want to jeopardize a, a relationship. I, I have to be the head coach, right? And to be quite honest, I'm close to my staff, but I also uh, learned early on, like, if I become too close with certain coaches, it becomes clickish, right? So I really kind of – surrounded myself, my, my inner circle are guys that aren't in football, right? And then my coaches, um, but I've, I've gained interest from guys that are on bowl teams, uh, guys that are in the NFL. It's, it's really been amazing. Now, Josh affords us the ability to pay him well, too. So I, I give a lot of credit to Josh and the administration because uh, it's, it's financially a good move to coach at Illinois as well. All right, Leo, last question. And for both coaches and Coach Brett, we'll start with you. When you start this season, your goal is to be one of those four teams in the college football playoffs. When it doesn't happen, Tampa, 80 degrees on New Year's Day, that's not a bad alternative, is it? No, it's, uh, and, and Zach said it best, right? This, this has got to be a reward. Um, there's obviously um, byproducts of getting your team, younger players, reps, and all that goes into it. But as soon as I heard, you know, this bowl, um, uh, I've known Jim and, uh, uh, his family been in, in the Outback Splash, uh, the, the spring event, uh, been down here to that several times. My wife's from Tampa, uh, so we couldn't, couldn't have drawn it up any better to come down here and spend a few days, and especially the, la the weather the last couple of days have been pretty good. Yeah, I mean, our problem, we, uh, obviously there's a, a particular game on uh, Thanksgiving Day that we prioritize over all others, and our guys handled business and, and got the win in that one, and obviously as a reward, it got to be here on January 2nd uh, in Tampa and this beautiful weather, and we're certainly enjoying ourselves, and then we get to play a heck of an opponent again. So, um, you know, that, I'm going to echo it again, right? Uh, bowl games are about the players, right? It is a reward for the season they've had, the work that they've put in, and the success they've had. And both teams have had incredibly successful seasons, uh, and they should be, you know, the players should be commended for that. And... I know as coaches, right, we're honored to just be the guys who get to work with them on a daily basis, and we're excited to watch them line up and, and strap it up one more time and go out on January 2nd.